Emily Black, and I'm here to present uh, Flip Test, Fairness Through Optimal Transport, which is joint work with Samuel Yum and Matt Fredrickson, with equal contribution from Samuel Yum. So, oh, in front of the mic, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so what is Flip Test? Flip Test is an explanatory tool meant to uncover discriminatory behavior in machine learning models. We uh, aim for it to be an example-based method to uncover a wide range of potentially discriminatory behavior, so it doesn't follow any one particular rule or definition of fairness. Some nice things about it are that it's black box, meaning that we only need input and output information from the system that we're trying to test, and it's efficient so we can use it in real world circumstances. But how do we test a model for um, unfairness? How do we uh, determine if a model is acting in an unfair way? One intuitive way of thinking about this maybe is um, if you had a, protected, a different protected attribute, like a different race or gender, you should be treated in the same way by the model. So say I applied to my dream job, that was through a machine learning application process and I got one outcome, I would hope that if I had been born a male, I would be treated the same way by the model. If I was treated differently, perhaps uh, this would point to some potential discrimination on, uh, by the model on the basis of gender. So in order to make this comparison, what would happen to the male version of me, I need to figure out what does the male version of me look like, but how do we make this? Perhaps it's an ill-formed question, but maybe we can at least approximate it. So one way you might think of doing this is just by flipping the bit on my feature vector. So features are things that the model might see about you. Say the model sees these things, sex, income, height, and age. And we just decide to um, flip the feature vector for sex from female to male. There are a few problems with this, stemming from the fact that this doesn't take into account correlated attributes with sex. So even though it changes sex, it doesn't change, say, income or height. Um, which might be related to sex. So the first problem about this is that you might get an out of distribution or unrealistic male counterpart to me. And you might not get reliable, a reliable response from the model when using this as a point of comparison. But perhaps even more importantly, this doesn't take um, discrimination based on proxies or based on related factors. For example, if the model was discriminating not based on sex exactly, but on like some combination of income and height, that's really, that can be a proxy for sex. So I would say this doesn't quite work. Another method that we could use, oh sorry, wrong version of the slides. Um, another method that we could use to generate the male version of me um, is by using counterfactual fairness, which was uh, developed by Kusner et al. in a paper in 2017, where we develop a causal model of the feature space and then intervene on that um, feature. So in this case, we have sex, height, age, and income. We might decide that there is a causal relationship between sex and height and sex and income, but maybe not age. And then we would uh, essentially intervene on the um, feature vector, so here we have like some relationship that we've decided upon, and then if we make this change through the causal relationships that we've decided, we create a more accurate version of the male version of me. Now this is all well and good if we have the perfect causal model, so we have some way of knowing exactly how these features are related, but we can imagine that there might be situations where we're not comfortable making all of these causal assumptions to generate this graph. Um, and furthermore, we might be interested in seeing discrimination that's not just based on causal factors, but based on correlated factors. So to answer these problems, what do we use in flip dust? We use something called optimal transport. Now optimal transport is a method of morphing one distribution into another distribution, and it does this by taking all of the points in one distribution and moving them in such a way that the end result is the other distribution. And it does this in such a way so that some, uh, the sum of these movements minimizes some cost function that you specify. Now, the way that this gives you the male version of me is that if I'm in the female distribution, by definition, this morphing process gives you a mapping from one distribution to the other distribution. So wherever I'm mapped to in the male distribution will be the male version of me. Some nice things about getting the male version of me in this way is that, first of all, we're not making any causal assumptions. We're not making any assumptions. We're just relying on observational data, which is nice. And then the other nice thing about this is that we're guaranteed to get an in-distribution sample or a realistic male, since by definition, the optimal transport mapping goes from the female distribution to the male distribution. So I'm going to end up with a real male on the other end. Um, one thing that I should note is that in the, for the sake of efficiency in the flip test procedure, we use a GAN approximation of the optimal transport mapping, and you can read all about that in the paper. So now that we know how we get the male version of me, how do we actually use flip tests? So I'm going to talk about uh, how flip test actually works by grounding it in an example. Um, so the example I'm going to use is from a paper by Lipton et al. in 2017 where they make this mock hiring data set. So they have hair length and work experience as inputs to a model that decides whether or not you're qualified for a job. 
And an important thing to note about this model is that uh, it satisfies demographic parity, meaning that it hires the same percentage of men and women. Now, this model was made to point out the fact that if you have a blind model, that's, um, so in this case, it doesn't see sex as a feature, that's trying to be fair with regards to sex, it can actually use a proxy variable to discriminate in some other way. So in this case, hair length is used to discriminate essentially against um, short-haired people because they're being seen as men. Um, so, how do we test for discrimination in the system using the flip test process? Um, so, first we sample populations of men and women who might be applying to this job. Then we use our approximate transport mapping to get the pairs of men and women that are correspondent to each other. We run these pairs through the model and then we compare outcomes. So, how exactly do we compare outcomes? This is perhaps another uh, crux of the, the process. We look at something called the flip set, which we define to be the set of people whose model outcome changes post translation. So, this is the women who are hired as women but not hired as men, or the women who are not hired as women who were hired as men. And this goes back to our intuitive notion of fairness from the beginning. What does it mean for a model to act unfairly? It means that it treats the male version of me differently than it treats me. Um, and so this, looking at these sets of people in detail is where flip, set, flip test looks for evidence of discrimination. Um, so how it does this, one way that we uncover potential discrimination is by looking at the potential subgroup discrimination, by looking at how the distri distribution of the subgroups uh, are different from the overall distribution of the population. So this is for each feature, work experience, and hair length, and you can see the, the blue is the overall distribution of women, whereas the orange and the green are distributions of the flip set, so the women who are either hired as women and not hired as men, or women who are not hired as women and were hired as men, and you can see that their distributions differ significantly on these um, different features. And then another information, another piece of information that we can gather from looking at the flip sets is a possible cause of discrimination. Now this is a sneak peek into the rest of the paper. Please go read if you're interested. We also use experiments on much more complicated data sets. This is Chicago SSL. Um, and we can provide a first pass into what might be the cause of the potential discrimination that's uh, happening in the model. So please read the paper for that. That's my talk. Um, I presented flip test, an explanatory tool to uncover discriminatory behavior in machine learning models. An important note that was from the Lipton example is that, um, oh, from the Lipton example is that uh, it um, can uncover discriminatory behavior even in models that uh, are group fair. And please read the paper if you're interested in finding out more about how we uncover subgroup discrimination, potential cause of discrimination, and for essentially half the paper of a wide range of experimental validation. Thank you.